So today we're finally going to do a follow-up video on 9-volt cable repair. We're going to fix one of these train connectors which use the same crappy material. So these have a regular 9-volt connector on one end, but then the track connectors are different, so we're going to have to figure out how to take those apart. Previously, we used a 22 gauge cable with a relatively thin but tough insulation. Uh, these proved pretty difficult to push into the teeth in these 9 volt connectors, but this time we found a different cable which will hopefully make this easier. This cable was recommended to us by Battery Powered Bricks. It's a, a BN Techco 24 gauge silicone wire. This spool is 25 feet of four ply wire. Uh, basically the gist of it is the gauge, wire gauge only refers to the thickness of the cable inside. And this has to be that size for the teeth inside the nine volt connector to engage. However, the thickness of the rubber coating on the outside of the wire, the sheath is also important because it has to fit between this gap, it has to pass through other holes, it has to be exactly you know, one plate across to fit in various LEGO system. Uh, and so the difficulty was that we had to find a wire that was flexible and also worked with the plug connectors. And so this wire does a very good job of that. You can see it's the right thickness, the sheath is basically the right thickness, it's very soft and flexible, and we'll see how well that holds up. So opening the track connectors actually proved pretty difficult. You don't want to pry up on the shell because the thin plastic uh, develops stress marks pretty easily. Instead, what I think you want to do is you want to try to scrape some material off the tabs and then push them gently into the shell and down and then try to pry off the base through the wire openings. So this is the inside of the 9-volt LEGO train track connector. The two, uh, so the way it works is there's these two sloped things, and one goes on each rail of the layout. Uh, and therefore, each side is powered by one of these two wires. Now, when it's put together, it actually looks like this. They're on opposite sides of the wire, uh, forcing you to twist the wire when you thread it underneath and plug it in. The reason for that is there's only one mold for the bottom of this. So they have the same piece of metal, the same piece of plastic, and importantly, the same cutting tooth that connects to a wire. So you can see if we simply attach them to the wire going the same way, they'd be plugged into the same wire and you wouldn't actually be supplying power to both, both kinds of power to the track, both positive and negative. So that'd be kind of pointless. So the way it's actually put together is one of them is turned this way, and now you can see one will punch the left wire, one will punch the right wire to make contact. Now LEGO didn't want to rely on these teeny tiny teeth to hold the wire in place. They don't do that on these cables either. There's a stress relief feature that forces you to bend the wire like this. Uh, and that this bend in the wire is actually what holds any tension. If you pull on it, the wire wedges against some plastic and no force is applied to the little delicate teeth here. On this design, for whatever reason, uh, the bendy feature is not part of the base here as it is on the 9 volt, uh, these sort of 9 volt wires. Uh, instead, it's on the top and the wire comes in here and goes under this red thing and comes back out. The red thing's held on by a screw which is also a little strange. It just looks like this. I'm guessing they did this to make the whole thing easier to put together. You don't have to finagle and like try to squish this on while also bending the wire around. So you can take your time, carefully bend the wire into this notch, screw down the red thing, and now the wire's not gonna go anywhere when you push this piece back into the clamshell. And it'll just neatly punch the wire in the right spot and it'll just work. 
if the connector was tough, the ferrule was even worse. Uh, here you can see we pried it open from the side, but in the process we broke two of the tabs. In retrospect, I think the proper way to do this is to cut the wire and then try to pry it open from the ends uh, where the wire goes in. Okay, so these little teeth get bent outward a little bit when you pull out the wire. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to flatten them first and then squeeze them together a tiny bit. And then hopefully it'll actually punch the wire and we'll test it with the multimeter. So I'll look closely at that. Okay, and then you got one side over there and we're gonna get one side over here and we're gonna see. Okay, it works. Reassembling the connectors with the new wire is actually very easy. What you wanna do is you wanna screw in the wires first with the red holders and then just press the base back in. With this wire, the teeth bite very easily. And all you need to do is make sure you push that bottom in straight and the teeth will bite the wire and go into the slots on the other side. The nine volt connector works just like the nine volt connectors in our previous video. So you can refer to that. And after that, just make sure that you test both sides. You wanna make sure that the negative connects with the negative and the positive connects with the positive, but you also wanna make sure that the negative doesn't connect with the positive or vice versa. So something is wrong here. Uh, I imagine this is a piece of track and I plugged the connectors in. This wire should not pass under the track at an angle. It should come flat and come in on this side. But we explained earlier that if you just attach both connectors going the same way, like that, right? And you plug them on the track like this, that won't work because the same polarity is plugged in uh, on both sides. So what we actually have to do is this, but with a half twist. So I have to clarify, there's only one way you can install this wire. On the connector at the end, it has to come out of the inside here because that's the side that the teeth are on. The teeth can't grip the wire um, on the terminating side. Now, for the middle connector, all you have to do is flip it over 180 this way, such that the teeth grab the other strand. So in the end, what you're gonna have, you're gonna have this connector like that, the wire like that, and then your center connector like that. In this case, it's actually lucky that we had to take it apart again because we also forgot to install the ferrule. Now, if you forgot or your case is too busted up, this probably isn't 100% necessary, but the ferrule does smooth out some of the noise in the cable. Um, if your case is too busted up, you can probably also just heat shrink this and it'll basically be just as good. And here you can see the finished product. We actually made two of these to verify that the process works like reasonably well. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions and please consider subscribing if you like what we do uh, on that note this is the end of the video so have a nice day